All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're inside the greenhouse here, this commercial greenhouse I have access to. And the fig trees we're looking at today are in containers. They are have been in this space for about a month, month and a half, and they are doing fantastic. We just put out a video actually talking about the success of these particular trees. Maybe you guys missed it. Go back and check that out because now we actually have the main crop set on a lot of the, the trees in here. Most of the branches have fruit set. And what you'll notice is if you don't have fruits present on the branches, or maybe you have fruits on the tree, but not all of the branches actually have fr uh, produced fruit, it's almost always a lack of light. And every single year I get the same question, well, Ross, why does my tree not produce figs? It's big, it's beautiful, it's healthy, it grows really fast, but it doesn't produce any figs. Why is that? It's almost always a lack of sunlight. And not just the lack of sunlight where you've planted it or where it's sitting in a container, but it's also just within your tree. It could be a very dense canopy that you have. A lot of fig trees grow very differently. Some grow more horizontally, some grow straight up in the air, and some have a very dense canopy. And if it's super dense and you're growing a lot of those branches straight up in the air, you're not gonna get the sunlight that you need to set those fruit buds. Every single fig tree is different. Every single variety is different. And every single variety needs a specific amount of intensity and duration of sunlight to set those fruit buds on the branches as they are growing. If the sunlight requirement is not met as the tree is growing, the fruit buds will not set. And you will see on all the trees, if I went through here and examined every single one of them, the branches that are a bit shaded, typically they're lower down here on the branches, or typically in this particular case, because this orientation of the sunlight is that the sun rises over here and then sets over there. Typically this side of the tree and the trees in general, if there is a shadier spot on this side, I don't get great fruit set. Or I could pretty much ascertain that I would have less fruit set on this side than I would potentially on the other side. Not because there's, let's say that morning light is preferred, it's just that there's a lack of sunlight because of that shading on this side of the tree. Or maybe because I have on this bench here, I have three containers uh, deep for every single tray or every single um, bench that I have here. And so the trees in the middle of the bench don't get that sunlight as much. And so just in general, the trees in the middle don't have as much fruit set and the branches on the shadier side of the tree or the shadier parts of the tree just don't get the fruit set that they need. It's up to us as the grower to help our trees get the most sunlight possible. It's not just about figs, it's about every single fruit tree you grow, it's about every annual you grow. Whether or not it's a tomato, it doesn't matter. Any annual, any plant, they all need sunlight and it's the utmost critical, especially when we're talking about edibles. Um, and so in the fig trees case, that's the one little difference is that they have to get that sunlight as they grow. We can't go back in time and say, all right, well, I'm going to take this, this fig tree here and I'm going to move it to a different location that gets more light. That doesn't always work because we can't go back in time, but we can if we do move it and we do make the corrections now, we could potentially see fruit set as we go and continue growing on our fig trees. So this is the critical time, right? It's the spring for most of us. Well, it is the springtime, but it's still rather cool out for most of us. A lot of you maybe even just started your growing season. Um, this is the most important thing you can do all year. I talk about it a lot, training the fig trees. We talked about training them. This is the critical thing. So we're using today stakes and we're using also limb spreaders. These are the two tools that anybody can use Steaks are extremely affordable. I get them, uh, you could actually just grow bamboo and cut it, that's one option. Um, I usually get these at Lowe's in the past. I've gotten like packages of 25 for around six or seven, eight dollars. Uh, and it's well worth it. First off, I ship a lot of trees and I need steaks, but I have hundreds of steaks for this purpose. Every year, every single fig tree is evaluated for their form, the sunlight that they're gonna receive this year, and then the adjustments are made. These limb spreaders, I picked these up on, uh, actually on Stark Brothers. I'm sure you can get these on just a bunch of different websites. You might wanna try Amazon. I haven't found a great source for these other than 
Stark Brothers. But basically how this works, a different, different from the stake, is you take this and you put it basically in between two branches and it spreads the branches away from each other and forces them to have more of that open center that we want. All the branches, if they're growing vertically, they're receiving less light than they potentially can. If my arm is the branch, or if this particular branch is one example of a branch that we're gonna stake today, is that we're gonna put the stake in the pot. We're just gonna get it in there. <clears throat> and then we're gonna take our branch that we know needs to be staked, and we're gonna stake it here on an angle. So if I turn the tree for you guys, hopefully this allows you to see a little bit better, is that it was growing straight up in the air. Now we're putting it on an angle. And so by putting it on that angle and forcing it more on a horizontal angle, we're allowing it to get more sunlight. If my arm is the branch, the sun normally hits the top parts of the branch. If I put it on an angle, now the sun is not only hitting this top part of the branch like it was before, but it's also hitting further down the branch. And our fig trees love that. When they have access to more of that sun in places where there are activatable buds or places where buds can grow, it will grow and it will actually grow into that sunlight and make use of it and therefore actually produce a lot more fruit. And of course, set the fruit buds at that location. The more fruiting branches we form along these branches that have access to the right amount of sunlight that meet that requirement of light that we talked about, the better. So this is the one thing that I would do every single year and you must do it now. There's no like, oh, I'll wait a couple weeks. The further and or the earlier I should say you do this, the better off you are, the more of an exponential benefit there is. The little things we do now add up to mountains later on in the growing season. That's an exponential benefit. Um, and if you're not seeing fruit set like you have in the past, this is the perfect thing. This is the one thing that I would highly, highly recommend. If you enjoyed this video here, guys, please do me a favor hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out the blog, figboss.com. I have so much information there and a companion guide to this video. We will see you guys for the next one. Take care.